come from a legacy of, a lot of basically every man in my line of descent had been in the military. My father was an aviator. My grandfather was an Italian uh, carabinieri. My great grandfather fought in the Italian Civil War. I mean, you just keep going back, and uh, I come from a legacy of veterans. Since I was a kid, every time I saw G.I. Joe, I saw Army Men, I heard the stories of the elder. There's never any question in my mind I was going to be a soldier. So 9-11, when 9-11 happened, we're doing interdiction on the coast of Macedonia border. I was part of the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit. We were on a small base out on the border of Kosovo. And I was the fire support officer for the company. Company commander, Captain Colford, called me on the radio and he said, uh, uh, there's been a bomb in New York City. There's been an explosion. Nobody knows what's happened. Thousands a day. And uh, we didn't really know anything. Uh, all we had was a little transistor radio to listen to. And it wasn't until about a week later we saw the pictures of the World Trade Center coming down. Getting ready to get out uh, until 9-11 happened. Um, I was looking at uh, possibly going into law enforcement. Now there was no question. After 9-11, there was no question. And I knew I was going to make my life in the military. I said, as long as I am strong and young and capable of fighting, uh, I'm not going to, I can't let this threat go unanswered. The idea of being with the land started working with the Iraqi tribes in 0405. And, um, uh, we were visiting Sheikh Nuwaf Marsum. So we'd go visit him and he'd roll out the red carpet. And you'd go through this crappy wasteland. And then once you'd hit these, these, these date trees and these, these palm trees and open up into this Shangri-La, like this, this paradise on earth, and that was his farm, those were his farms. And um, he, he rolled out this big papyrus scroll. Uh, it was the size of a big, like almost 15 feet long, the size of this big table that he would feed us on. And on it was a vine, a fig vine, a drawing of a fig vine and a leaf. And every leaf had a, a name of one of his ancestors going back to the time of Muhammad. And when I saw that, I was like, no one living in a city or a suburb can ever build this. You're the slave to an economy. But when you have a farm and you have your own system, you know, you're a master of your own land, you're a master of your own life. And when I saw that, I said, this is for me. After retiring from the military, Joseph purchased a farm in Northern New Jersey. Since then, he's been working with NRCS through two EQIP contracts, which will provide financial assistance toward his operation for cattle and sheep. Joseph first uh, came to NRCS uh, in early fall of 2019. Uh, we walked the property together and that's when he expressed his interest in silver pasture. Silver pasture is a new concept for us here in New Jersey. Uh, managing uh, trees and forage uh, while grazing livestock on the same land. Um, he's one of the first farmer to adopt the practice uh, on his property in the state. A plan was devised to introduce the right mixture of grasses and legumes to balance the forages. This will allow them to thrive while maintaining and managing crop trees for future products. All of this will work in tandem with the grazing animals whose waste will be distributed throughout the field and recycle the nutrients back into the soil. If you're the type of person to quit on something, you're not, you're not going to get this. I would have the patience and the commitment and the ability to work with different people from different walks of life. The military taught me that. 